Hi, welcome to Create, Dream and Paint. I'm Erin. Today we are learning about color value. The videos have age guidelines, but just so you know, these are only guidelines. They're just a suggestion. So do one or you can do them both. Today we need our paint supplies, a pencil, eraser. Let's get started. So today we're learning about color value. Color value is the lightness and darkness of a color. So we're going to try, I'm going to explain it while using yellow. So if we see yellow right out of the tube or the bottle, it's going to be really, really dark. That's a dark yellow. So you can use any color. You can make black into like gray and white, or you could use blue or purple to do this, but I'm choosing yellow. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually get another lid here to mix on, sometimes I do that, is I will add my yellow. And on, I'm gonna wash off my brush so I don't get all that yellow in the white so I can use it later. And it's all about the amount of white you add to it. So I'm just going to take a little bit of yellow. Do you see how that is so much lighter? But there's different values of that yellow. There's in between the bright and the light yellow. So this one's going to be the light yellow. Do you see the difference? I want you to try it with one of the colors you have. Doesn't matter what color it is, but I want you to see if you can make that color lighter using white. So I have the lighter yellow and I could even go lighter from there. I could add even more white, but I kind of want to mix some of my yellow with the lighter yellow. And you know what happens? I get the, the value in between. So that is how you get a color value. So in the next couple of minutes, I'm going to be back with our project for today. And it's all going to be based on color value. See you in a minute. So today we're working on color value. And we just talked about color value. It's the lightness and darkness of a color. So we are going to learn lots of fun things today. We're going to do that through learning to draw a cat. If for some reason you don't like a cat, you can always change the face and the ears to make it a dog. So let's give it a go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the head of the cat and we're going to start with the shape of a Remember, you can slow this video down anytime you need to or stop it and take a break. You don't have to work your whole way through. Okay, so we've got the football for the face. And then next, we are going to do two sticks out of the football to create the long neck. Next, what I'd like to see you do is to draw a big circle on the bottom because we're creating where we're going to make the body. And I'm going to show you that by doing a circle. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a line like we learned from last time. We're going to follow the long neck go around the circle to the very bottom. Around the long neck to the very bottom. So we have the shape of a cat. So we can get rid of all these lines that we don't need that we created just to show us how to make our shape. So remember what I said about drawing last time. It's not difficult. We just have to remember Everything is a line and a shape. So the next I'm going to thing I'm going to put on is a tail. I'm going to create a nice big long tail. 
And cats can have all sorts of tails. They can have a long straight tail like this, or a really fuzzy tail. It's up to you. The next thing we're going to do is the two ears. So if we're doing a cat, it's just two triangles. Like to play with some shapes where one triangle might be bigger than the other triangle. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna do two ovals. So it's a long circle as eyes. And remember, they don't have to be perfect. They don't have to even be the same size. Everything just makes it more interesting how you want to put it in. A triangle for the nose. So what I'm going to do now is last week we did a sun. And this week we're going to create a moon. So it's going to be a nighttime scene. So any of you want to look, this made it confusing how I drew the moon. Really, it's just a big circle. You could create a big circle and then just draw a line through to create that moon. And you know what? Sometimes a moon is a full moon. So if you want to make a circle moon, you definitely can. Or if you don't want a moon at all, you can put a sun or a cloud, wherever the whatever you want to put in the background, you can. I'm just here to try to help guide you. Okay, so another thing we're going to do is we're gonna create spots on our cat. So I want you to put a big circle somewhere. I got one on his neck, one on his body, Two on his body. Should we do a third one? I think we do. One more. And then I'm going to put some spots on his tail. You don't have to. Or if you get them on there and you don't like them, you can keep the same color. This is just an idea. Okay, one more right here. Okay. So I'm going to go get my paints together and I'll be right back. So it's time to paint. I wanted to show you this example. It's not exactly the same. We have one cat, not two, and we have a moon. But I wanted to show you the differences of the color values on this painting. I want you to see we have a dark pink for the cat's fur, but on the spots it's a light pink. That's because the color value changes. Same with the cat with the dark purple and the light purple. And if you look throughout the background, I have light blue and, dark blue, and darker blue. So it's all based on changing that color value. I have one more thing to show you. This is a painting I've been working on this week and it's of a tree and the grass and the sky. And I want you to look, if we just painted one color on our painting for each section, so if it, the grass was just a plain green and the sky was a plain blue, how boring that would be. It would look very flat. So if you look, I've incorporated different values of the same color into the painting. So it gives it a little bit more life and it's less flat. So we have light green, medium green, dark green. We have light blue, dark blue, medium blue. And I even, in each individual leaf, there's dark, medium, and light. And same with the tree trunk, dark, medium, and light. So color value can really help us keep what we're painting, but create some more interest. So I'm gonna put this to the side, and I am going to start, uh, it's gonna fall over. I'm gonna start this painting, and this painting we have the cat. So 
I was going to paint my cat purple, but I realized we're going to have a dark black sky. So you'll be able to see the cat, but not very well. So I changed my idea and we're going to go with green because green can be, this green is a bright color. So I want stuff that we can see. So do you remember when we were talking about color value? The color value is the darkness and lightness of a color. So I just want to show you, I'm going to mix to the side here. I have my green I want to work with and I've added some white and that creates a lighter color green. That is the color we are going to use for the spots. We're going to do a really vibrant green for the rest of the body and the face. So I've got my brush. Remember, you want to wet it a little bit. Maybe touch your paper towel just to get some of that off. And we're going to go and we're going to fill in the cat. And you see where we have the details. Sometimes it's hard to paint around the details completely. So feel free, you can always paint over top because with acrylic paints in which we're using, it dries really fast. And because it dries so fast, we can paint over top of it. There's some paints, like the paints I use are called oils, which one day we will get into when you get a bit older. But those are difficult because they stay wet for so long. So if I go to paint something over the detail, that means I have to wait days and sometimes a week before I can paint another layer. Otherwise it gets kind of the colors start to, to run into each other and it doesn't look as good. So, but with acrylic, we're lucky because acrylic dries so nice and fast. We can do this so quickly and let it dry <clears throat> between layers because it's only going to take a few minutes. And then we're going to come back. And if you can see my pencil lines, I can see, still see them. If you can't, don't worry. You can go back in with the pencil. And with that pencil, you can draw those details that you're missing if you can't see it like I can on mine. It depends on the type of paint you're, you're using and what color it is. Okay, so I'm gonna go and paint that ear. So I am going to go and I am going to paint the entire body green. I'm going to paint my moon yellow and I'm going to paint the sky black. So we are going to just keep, I'm gonna show you how we're going to do the moon. We're just gonna fill it in like we were filling in something with a coloring book, but really we're just filling it in with paint and a paintbrush. Just a different medium, that's all. So I'm gonna just keep painting away. And then after we've got everything all filled in, I'm gonna use a bigger brush here. If ever it's taken you too long and you know you can get away with a bigger brush, go with it. doing the base coat. And if all of a sudden you want to change something in your painting, like I said, you can make the cat a dog, you can make the moon a sun. That's just fine. I want, and I want to see, please send me a picture. I absolutely love this week seeing all the pictures. It makes me so happy to know you guys are enjoying these classes. I feel so strongly about art. I love it. I love to paint and being able to teach people is an amazing thing. Okay, so I cleaned off my brush from the yellow and I'm gonna go in with a nighttime sky. And I wanna show you one thing before I let you go and paint yours. See how I said I was gonna have purple? and I changed my mind because, oh, I have a black sky. That's an option, but we'd want to really lighten up that purple, right? So for this one, so I can see the purple cat, 
against the black sky. Otherwise, the purple is kind of dark too, right? But the green is nice and bright. That's why I've picked it. Okay, so what I'm going to go, I am going to just do this. I am just doing the plain green throughout the body and tail, and I'm finishing the black. And I'm going to be right back. Well, we're back. And here's my dark sky, my moon, and my cat. So we're going to go into details. But before we do that, I wanted to bring up the fact today I'm using a piece of paper and not a canvas like I did last week. You can use cardboard, paper, all sorts of different substrates to paint on. Don't paint on your mom and dad's walls. They will not like that. But we can do this. If you notice though, the paper is bubbling a little. It's because it's drying and I, each part's got a little bit different amount of moisture. So it's kind of like drying and not knowing how to be flat. If all of a sudden it's super bubbly and you don't like it, ask your parents to spritz the back of it with some water after this is all dry and put it between some books. And I usually put some parchment paper over top just so it doesn't stick on anything important. So color value. Do you remember I said that I took my bright green and I mixed it with the white to have a light green because we're changing the value. So that's what we're doing right now is I'm going to go in I'm going to put this to the side. I'm going to go in and start painting all the spots on the cat a light green. Oh, and I can't wait to see what you guys have. I'm so excited. And I'm always looking for ideas too. If you're super interested in something, you let your mom and dad know and I can um, attempt to, to teach you something. Like if you wanna learn how to paint a tree, I can teach you guys how to paint trees. So I just have to know like, what kinds of things are you wanting to do in this class? Because I wanna listen to everybody and all of us create together, but you can kind of decide on some of our projects. Okay other spot and then we're going to go in and I'm going to paint the eyes and I'm going to we're going to make some stars I'm kind of excited about that to be honest in the sky and like I said you can add anything you want the best thing kids are so much better at than grown-ups is their imagination. You guys are creative and tried to need to hold on to that. Art is so important. Really can help us when we're bored or we need a break and sometimes we just need some quiet and chill time. And those are the perfect times to ask your mom and dad. You got to ask first if you can get out your drawing materials. And if you're drawing or painting through the week and it's not the projects, please still send me the pictures. That's why I built this whole community is because I want people from all over to love to paint because I think it's so important and a lot of us just don't know how to do it. I was really lucky that I found that out. I used to love to draw and I draw for and I used to draw for years and years. And then when I started taking painting classes, oh, it was so wonderful. So what I'm gonna do is the inside of the eyes, think about what color a cat's eyes can be. A cat's eyes can be green or blue or light gray. I'm gonna kind of create a light yellow I kind of like kind of almost looks like a Halloween scene I didn't do that on purpose but that's kind of what it looks like so let's go in paint the eyes and remember what I said it doesn't have to be perfect see my 
edges might not be perfect. But I'm going to go in with markers later and clean it up a bit. And then what I'm going to do, if we're on kind of Halloween, I'm having kind of a Halloween mode here right now. I'm going to use a really bright kind of fun purple to put in for the nose. And there's a little bit extra water on my brush that shouldn't be. If that happens to you and starts making a mess, you just touch your paper towel with your paintbrush and it's going to take some of that water out of your brush. So we are going to just fill in that nose. I think that's super cute. Okay. We're going to wait for this to dry to do the stars, but I can show you now how to do the stars. Well, it's because the background is all nice. So I've got a brush and I'm going to fill it with some water. Like I've got some water on it and some of my paint. And I roll some of that extra water off. I'm trying to make a point, a point on my brush. And I'm going to go and just dab. Boop, like that. And I want you to go in and you can go in I'm going in with white right now, but that doesn't mean that is all I'm going to put in the sky. I'm going to create some different colored stars with different values. The different values I've kind of made. And it brings kind of the greens and the yellows and it'll kind of spread it out over the sky. Oopsies, that one's kind of... There we go. That's a bigger star than the others. Maybe that means it's a wishing star. And if you have some wishing stars, that's okay. Some of them can be bigger or more bright than the other ones. So we're gonna go in. See, if I push on my brush harder, it leaves a bigger mark. And if I push my, just gently touch my brush, it's a smaller mark. So it shows you that the way you use your brush can change the whole aspect of your painting. So we're gonna go around here. Lots of fun. You could do different shapes in the background if you want. All sorts of things. It's your art and you are in control of what it looks like. You should have your parents try this too. Let's see what their paintings look like. I think next month I'm gonna do a surprise paint night for everybody. The surprise is the fact no one's gonna know what it's gonna be. I thought we could have our families do it. So you could do a paint night with your parents and it's gonna be part of this club. So I'll let you know the details when it comes out and we can spend an evening or you guys can spend an evening painting we're gonna look at some yellow. See how it kind of is cool, how we're bringing some of our color everywhere. And at the same time, our cat is drawing. But you just keep adding to the stars. You could draw some shooting stars, a satellite, a planet. Sky's the limit, literally. Here we go. Here we go. I'm so excited to see what your paintings look like and what color you guys decided on. Oh, look at all the stars. Love it. So my cat, oh, look at that. It's still a little bit wet, so I have to fix its nose. See, Erin, that wasn't that smart. You should have left it, but there we go. Okay, so the eyes are nice and dry. So I'm gonna look, I'm gonna take my black marker 
And I'm going to put how a cat eye is, just a line in the middle of the eye, just like that. And I'm going to outline just the top. Now I'm going to outline the eye all the way around. It can look a little like it looks like a lot. And if you're going for that, do it. But if you're not, that's okay. Okay, the nose is still wet. But some of the spots here are dry. So I'm going to draw around with a black marker. It just kind of ties in the color that's in the background, right? I think... I'm going to wait a moment and I'm going to come back when everything is dry. I just don't want to wreck where I've gotten. So I'll be back in just a moment. So our painting is dry. It's time to add some more stuff. There's still a little couple wet spots, but everything I'm going to work on. The only thing I did while I was gone was I outlined the moon in black. Just kind of gave it a nice line around it. And now I'm going to outline the face. And I'm using black just because it, black is there. It's just kind of crisping up that line a little bit. And if you decide you want to do a, a crazy color or a green, like you could stay with the same color your cat is. That is definitely okay. Perfect. I'm going to go in and I'm going to clean up the ears. I want you to look how... Nothing I do is exactly perfect. And I think sometimes in art, that's amazing. You don't want it to look like it was a perfect computer that printed something out and it looks absolutely perfect in every way. I like how it looks real. It looks like something I've worked on. So always remember that when you're thinking that you want it to look amazing, that yes, but you don't have to... Be the imperfection of it is sometimes the most beautiful part. Okay, there we go. Through this class, not today, but another day, we're going to learn about, start learning about different artists in history. So at the end of the month, we're going to be learning about my favorite artist, Van Gogh. And we actually just finished a book that was all of the letters he had written to his brother in his lifetime. And somebody's taken all those letters and put them in a book. It took me a very long time to read it, but it's absolutely so interesting. Okay, so we're going to go around the tail. Like I said, if you decide you don't want to do an outline, don't feel like you have to. This is just what I'm doing with my painting today. Because I like it to be more of a pop. And I find it is sometimes when I outline things. And we're going to learn about that too. We're going to learn why when you put two colors together, or if you break a color apart with the outline, why it looks the way it does. Because to understand the rules of art means you understand them sometimes enough that you can sometimes break the rules. And I use sometimes mediums together that people say not to, but I find it works. But I kind of have tried to teach myself why. Why we're supposed to do the things we're supposed to do in art and why we're not. That's why we're learning about shapes and color value. This is stuff I even think about all the time when I do my own paintings at home. Oh my gosh, I love this. And you probably hear Zach. He's in the background. I think he's playing a game. He's hollering. Okay, you know what? One more thing before we go. I've got to finish these ears. These triangle ears. Kind of looks like an alien cat. <laughs> I kind of like it. The one other thing I would say that you can do is you could decorate things too with your markers or paints. I like adding just like random shapes, like I'll do squares, but this one I'm doing spots. And it just kind of adds to your painting. And no, it doesn't have to make sense. That's the cool thing about art sometimes is it doesn't always make sense. It's just what we're feeling, right? 
what we'd like to do, what we'd like to see, what would that look like? What's the worst thing that's gonna happen? Like I told you guys last week, that we could just take our paintbrush and paint over it. Notice I didn't do any whiskers. You can do whiskers too if you want. I'm just adding these little dots, kind of like cheetah dots. You could do little hearts or little squares. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to do them in the sun too. Just to kind of bring it into the same design I was doing here. Okay. Well, I had so much fun today. So if you have any questions, oh, one more thing. If you have any questions at all, you reach out and let me know. And I want to see your pictures. I'm so excited. Okay, I'll see you next time.